All right. Thanks for doing this today. I appreciate it very much. Excellent. So obviously you've just got this new Anderson Wakeman record out, The Living Tree. Tell me, yeah. how did this come about, the idea to do an album with just Rick and yourself? Well, we were planning to do a concert in the UK. We had a couple of dozen shows in the UK in October. So about, I think it was midsummer. I said to Rick, why don't we do, uh, write a few songs for the show? And these songs are always interesting to perform. So we started writing some songs. We finished up enough for an album. And that's why we put together the album and thought, well, put the album out. It's, it was really good to perform the songs on stage. So the audience loved uh, the new songs, and then we decided to put the album out. What's, how's the compositional process different when you know it's just you and he working together as opposed to if you were working on a larger group project? Right. Well, it's a lot simpler. Um, Rick would send me some music by the internet on MP3. And I would, uh, I wouldn't listen to the music too much. I, I just started recording right away and just uh, spontaneously sing something and uh, come up with some ideas. I like to do that. Uh, it's when you're working with a one-on-one, -on -one, it's a lot easier to be spontaneous with melodies and lyrics, and uh, it came together pretty quickly. So none of these are songs that had been started for other projects. They're all specifically written for this album. Yeah, I think there's one song that uh, I'd written with uh, a, a young pianist out of uh, New Jersey. Like, and he sent me the song on the on, on the internet, and I just sang it and thought that me and Rick would do, do a good job with it. So that's the only song that was out of the Rick and John sort of writing. Mm -hmm. and it just uh, worked out. It's the last song called uh, Just One Man. Right, right, I got you. Cool. And uh, the rest were, as I say, me and Rick, just uh, to and fro by the internet, the modern studio. <laughs> Do you like that style as opposed to uh, going to a, a remote location, everybody together and, and working on an album all of a piece? I think it's, uh, you know, different strokes, you know. Um, I've been working with different people around the world by the internet over the last five years. So I have a couple of dozen people that I work with on a regular basis all very talented and so I just said Rick you know send me the music and I'll, I'll sing it and uh, we'll see what it sounds like and it, it always sounded really great and it's just very more instant ideas um, we didn't have to sit around and think about it too much mm -hmm. yeah. so the group situation is obviously very different you work with a band and you start with song ideas and uh, I would generally come up with some musical approach and uh, each member of the band puts in their ideas, you know. Yeah, But yeah, uh, with the uh, one-on-one, -on -one, it's sort of a different thing. It, it has to be easier to not have to appease as many people over parts and that sort of thing. Well, you know, when you work as a band, you, there's a lot of uh, to and fro -ing and you try to make everybody happy, and uh, that works generally 80% 80, 80 of the time. <laughs> yeah. So it's... It, uh, and what you finish up with is uh, very interesting music, you know, in a group situation. It always evolves into a, a more dynamic structure, uh, longer pieces of music, because you have so much talent to encompass, really. With this album particularly, how did you settle on the, the title and the concept of The Living Tree? Well, I've been singing... The song and the lyric of The Living Tree came up in a song that was originally nine minutes long, and then we edited it, part one and part two. And I just had this feeling that the connection with the tree, with the earth, and the, the wonderful oxygen that it gives us, and it gives us a lot, a lot more, because it, it is part and parcel of Mother Earth and the connection with the birds and the bees and the creepers and the callers. And in a way, we, we, we tend to forget how interconnected we are with Mother Earth. And uh, that was, the idea was uh, learning to love yourself and remember who you truly are. I think it was part of the lyrical content with a mystical, sacred side to it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I for one, you know, uh, driven around the 
world, not even looking at trees. Uh, Sometimes you do. But now I, I look at them on such a different level. Does that play into going green at all? I mean, is that a concern of yours, uh, the way our environment is, is progressing and some of the environmental policies of governments around the world? Oh, we're waking up, thank God, you know. Because, you know, Mother Earth is us. We are part of Mother Earth, and if we damage Mother Earth, then we're dam damaging ourselves collectively. What's your take on the global warming thing? There's, there's obviously a lot of debate uh, back and forth about whether it's caused by man, whether it's caused, whether it's just cyclical? I think it's more cyclical, and the Mother Earth is such a powerful energy force, and we are very lucky to be here on this planet, and uh, we, we must learn to be, as indigenous people say, we must be the caretakers of Mother Earth, and if over the last maybe 10, 20 years we started to realize collectively that we are one, and we shouldn't disregard everybody else in the world and just ruin our part of the world, et cetera, et cetera. You, you know the story. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we all are starting to understand it a little bit better. And uh, we're living in a very unique time of uh, slow but definite awakening. But uh, it, it seems like any paradigm shift in thinking has to happen uh, in baby steps. <laughs> you know, it doesn't happen all at once. Yeah, and, you know, musicians and poets have always sort of spoke about, and artists in general have always wanted to dream it into a better place and dream the world into a better place for our children and children's children. Yeah. The Monty Python, the children's 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 children. <laughs> and Life of Brian. <laughs>
Talking about um, 23, 24, 11, obviously, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm imagining you took a, an anti-war stance when we decided to go into those two wars. Is that a fair assessment? Oh, gosh, yeah. I just, I just have this painful feeling of, of, of the children being bombed in Baghdad. I, you know, it's like shock and awe. You know, it was a lot of bullshit, really, and, and, and eventually we will be told the truth. Yeah. And we are constantly being told the truth about a lot of things these days. Thanks to the Internet, the truth will set us free. You know, of course, I, I can't say what's justified and what's not, but it's interesting that our, our, there's an automatic response on, on a sort of governmental level that says, you know, go get them. It's always uh, that government or corporate level response, and then oftentimes it's not what the people living in the, the country really want. You know what I mean? Oh, well, the war is big business. Mm-hmm, exactly. It makes, it's a lot of money going to and fro, and... Unfortunately, a lot of angst and a lot of fear and a lot of doubt and, 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 and eventually a lot of wonderful people like soldiers that are out there, men and women that are out there trying to do the best they can. They come back to be wounded on many levels. And that's what the song's about. Right. And no matter which way, you know, we, we as, as the common people have a right to say that war isn't eventually good for us, you know? And maybe this will be one of the last wars that will explain that to us. And that's what we're going through, a, a final demise of warlike tendencies. And one of the reasons that I can say that is that corruption is being found out mm -hmm. at, at, on a global level. And there, there's no reason to fear uh, China or India, who are now giants, both financially and collectively uh, in, in a very different world than it was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I used to go to China, I was very interested in working in China because of their incredible knowledge and incredible history, uh, which was happening way before Greece. And uh, you know, the Mayan and the Central American were happening civilizations around the time of Greece. And, Generally speaking, we're taught in schools, as I was, that Greece was the sort of beginning of civilization, and uh, it's very untrue. The dragon, the, the, the China, that's been sleeping for such a long time is coming to the floor, and it has been documented many, many times how China and the Asian people will be a strong part of how the world evolves, and why not? Well, it's an older culture, definitely. Yeah, and, and very unknown to the Western civilizations who tend to pass them off as uh, now dangerous people. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, you know, in many ways. It's very like, oh, we're Christians and they're Buddha, but, you know, what, who's Buddha? Well, Buddha, Jesus, Mohammed, Krishna, all of them risen masters, and they have a right to be seen as a pathway to the divine, you know? rather than, well, they're not going to heaven, all those uh, Chinese people. And that's a lot of crap, as we know. Yeah, well, it, it just seems to me sometimes that when people are stuck on, on seeing uh, one particular book as being um, the way, then yeah. they discard every other way. And then, of course, you, that's, that's part of what causes wars, is somebody says, Right. I have this book that says I get this piece of land, and somebody else right. says I have this book that says I get this right. piece of land, you know? Right. Well, you know, that's why we're waking up in a slow, slow way to realizing that we're all collectively part of Mother Earth, and we all have our different path to understanding God, if you like. And uh, through art and music and um, all sorts of wonderful, evolving experiences by the Internet, we're going to be... An awakening consciousness on this planet. It's a great time to be alive. 